What's up guys, today we're going to be building a desert wasteland scrapyard compound. Today's build got away from me a little bit in terms of the scope. So today we're going to be building a set of chain link fences, a watchtower, some metal scrap piles, an adobe building, a crane, a desert crawler, and the two can be combined together. And uh, overall, it's going to make a pretty awesome desert scrapyard apocalyptic fort type thing. Let's jump right into it. Let's start by making some lengths of chain link fence. The first step is to make the bases. So I use a piece of medium chipboard and sketch out some oval shapes, making sure they have these connection points around them. This is one of my favorite crafting materials and I'll put a link in the description so you can get your own if you're interested. So I cut those out with a pair of scissors and then next I cut some pieces of bamboo cocktail stick. And these are gonna be my fence posts. Next I use a little bit of sculptor smash. This is the stuff that sculptors use to give sort of a shape underneath when they put plaster on, I think. I've never used it for the proper use, but it's really useful for crafting. So I basically just hot glue that in between some of these posts, and that's my basic fence. Very simple. But let's spruce it up a little bit, give it a little bit more of a fortified scrapyardy look with some few pieces of chipboard various shapes and sizes, a couple pieces of corrugated paper, and a 3D printed barrel or two. This will not only add stability, it also adds some visual interest and really sells the idea that you're in kind of a junkyard. This is a great time to raid your bits box for things like little gears and other pieces of random toy and slap those on there for some extra detail. Then I use some white glue, add some sand on there, and that's pretty much it. That's the basic fence, guys. Simple, easy, super versatile. You can see on this one I'm stacking up three barrels, and I'm also cutting a little hole in the fence to make it look a little bit more ramshackle, a little bit more interesting. Things like this give it a little bit more character. Next, let's build the tower. I start by drawing this elongated trapezoid on the piece of paper, and then cutting a piece of parchment paper and gluing it down over top. Nothing sticks to parchment paper. From what I understand, it's treated with some sort of silicon process and it makes nothing stick to it. So I glue some cocktail sticks down onto it, knowing that I can pull them up easily later, and then glue some skinny pieces of chipboard, top and bottom, and then all over it in various diagonal patterns to make a sort of tower. If you wanted to make a more appropriate civilized looking tower you could measure this and do it more organizedly. I kind of started with some straight lines and then added a bunch of haphazard crooked ones to make it have that sort of rundown industrial feel like it's sort of an improvised scrap structure in a post-apocalyptic world. Anyways you can see I've made two of these and then I just simply glue them together with uh, similar length pieces in between and that makes a nice square base tower shape that comes together nice and quickly. You can add as many supports as you want. I chose to keep mine looking fairly skeletal, but you can really do whatever you want. You could add scrap metal on it, whatever. You can see here, I'm using another piece of chipboard to cut a top panel, which will be the platform that the lookout or the snipers or whatever it can stand on and uh, I just sort of mapped out where which way did this go again uh, uh, anyways doesn't matter glue that on with some hot glue and it's all good hot glue hides so many mistakes guys that's why I use it so much in addition to bonding instantly you can really you really just can't screw up when you're using hot glue I add some panels of chipboard to the top to give it that improvised look to it and then I use a little bit of this diamond plating paneling from Plastruct. This stuff is pretty cool. It's a little bit more expensive than chipboard, so I use it sparingly, but it definitely adds a nice touch. So I read an article recently that said that you're supposed to put your call to action before the halfway point of your video. So this is just me reminding you that I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel, if you've been enjoying this sort of content. And um, 
and to subscribe, I suppose I should say as well. Uh, let's get back to it. I wanted this to look like a salvage yard, so I'm gonna need some piles of junk. Tinfoil is a great base for that. Shout out to RFD Hobby for this tip in his rubble video. And then I add some chipboard I-beams that are just made from three slices of chipboard and a bunch of random pieces from my bits box. Little panels, little pieces of corrugated paper, this little gear from a Barbie house that I used in a previous video. The trick to these is to make sure they look like they're actually leaning against each other rather than glued together. You really want to give the piece a sense of gravity. It's got to look like actual heavy things that are leaning in exactly the direction you'd want them to. This may sound obvious, but it's really easy doing something like this to just have it look like a ball of things glued together, and that's really not what you're going for. If you want it to look natural and you want it to look at scale, you need to sort of think a little bit about how things would lie against each other. And look at some reference pictures of scrapyards and stuff like that. A lot of time they just lean things against piles and then lean them and lean them and lean them until the pile gets bigger. So I add a little bit of sand around the outside as well, just to tie it in with the same environment as my fences and everything else. Let's build a little gateway for our compound here. There's a million different styles you could do for this but I chose to do the type that is sort of a panel of fencing that slides out of the way when you approach it. And to do that, I made this little panel, as you can see here, by making the same method as before, and then standing up two posts on either side of a longer piece of chipboard, making sure my door fits in between there, and reinforcing those with a few pieces of little chipboard. Then I add another piece of fence, similar to the ones I made before, and added an extra upright to sort of bound in the gate where it slides through. And again, I use a little barrel to help stabilize this, otherwise this individual post, because it's not dug into the ground, would be very unsteady. And there you can see, it's my sliding gate. Very simple, looks good, I'm happy with it. And it's just the right width to accommodate this fella driving his truck through. How charming. I reinforce it in the same way. I have this little sign from a toy car kit. I think that would be perfect on the front there. Yeah. To suggest that some traffic has been going through the gate. While the glue is still wet, I etch some horizontal lines in with a piece of cocktail stick. Next, I use Mod Podge to seal the paper parts of everything we've done so far. Today's build is actually part of a collaboration. Mike from Scratch Bashing reached out to me and said, Hey Eric, do you want to collaborate on something for Orktober? Which is, of course, in the month of October, orcs get the only attention they ever get the whole year round. And, um, and he gave me lots of notice and everything. And uh, here we are in late, late November, and I'm just finishing up. So sorry about that. Maybe some subconscious part of me just wanted to see the orcs get a little bit of attention outside the month of October. You know, I think they're pretty, pretty badly neglected, but, uh, but that's neither here nor there. So the other people collaborating on this challenge were uh, Frankie D. Crafter, uh, Mike from Scratch Bashing, as I mentioned, uh, Wylock from Wylock's Armory, and they all did really cool builds, super interesting stuff that you guys should go check out, and I will link them down below. So go check those guys out. Uh, now is the time to work on the main structure of the building. Let's talk for a quick second about Orky architecture. Orky architecture kind of falls into two broad buckets, the way I look at it. There's the scrap pile type stuff, and then there's the older, more retro stuff that is these square edged adobe looking buildings. And that's what I'm building here. Uh, it's kind of a at odds with the present day orc aesthetic. So in my mind, these structures are more like something that was built by a different civilization or some human inhabitants, and then the orcs have come along and looted them later. And uh, this is the style that was sort of very popular in the White Dwarf magazines and the codices when I was a kid. So it's fun to make something like this after all these years. 
To make a staircase, I start by cutting some runners out of chipboard. I go into this technique a little bit more in depth in my cardboard terrain video, which I'll link here. But another thing to consider here is that I'm making sort of a true scale stair. Like a stair would actually be navigable for some miniature of the size that I'm going to use on these pieces. And that's important to me. Some people like to make these giant stairs that look more like a salmon ladder or like amphitheater seating. And that's just not something I enjoy, to be honest. I think if you're going to make a piece of scenery, you might as well go as realistic as you can while still having it be playable. Um, having a miniature stop halfway up the stairs is not something that you absolutely need, and it's a pretty niche case in gameplay anyways. So just make a nice looking staircase. That's how I see it anyways. Apart from chipboard, I think my favorite crafting material is foam core. That's what this black stuff is here if you're not familiar with it. It's the same stuff that, at least when I was a kid, I used for sort of presentations where they have those things that fold out like doors opening. I don't know if I'm making sense. But anyways, it's a great material and I'll link it in the description. Here I'm taking a little bit of watered down spackle and adding it to hide the corners of my foam core and also add some texture. This is something Mike from Scratch Bashing does a lot. Again, if you haven't seen his channel, go check it out guys, he's really talented and does some great stuff. Next up we're building a crane. As you can see I'm using a very similar technique that I used to build the tower. Uh, there are a few key differences here. I'm adding a piece at the top with a hole punched in it and that will have a little Fulcrum, fulcrum, words are escaping me here. It's gonna have a little stick, a little stick going through it. And then I use this wooden spool that I got at the dollar store to glue the bottom together. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna look like the fulcrum piece. That's actually a fulcrum, I think. I don't know guys, as you can tell, I'm not an engineer, um, but I am able to make a serviceable crane just by eyeballing it. If you want to see a really cool crane that's built just from chipboard, check out RP Archive's channel because he did a video on that recently and it's pretty awesome. Anyways, you can see here I'm using a piece of jeweler's chain and uh, another spool. This chain is used for, I guess, hobby necklaces and stuff like that. I got mine at Michael's, but I'll put a link in the description for something similar. And I'm just going to attach that in between two pieces of foam core. I'm using cardboard here to clad the outsides of the foam core just to neaten it up a little bit. And then I drill some holes with the tip of my X-Acto knife and using this metal rail from Model Railroad, but any sort of wire like a coat hanger or so would do, I make this little crank shape. And this is gonna make my crane actually functional once I glue it all together. So I get my two halves ready and glue them together. And then I cut my piece of rail to length, fill the hole with hot glue, and I stick my spool through. And there you go. Look at that. That is very satisfying. Next I cut a little base piece from the foam core just to mount everything on. Get my crane together like this. Nice. I can't get enough of doing this, guys. You, you won't believe how long I played with this. This piece here is cool. I've had it in my bits box for a while. It's from an iced tea container, I think, but I think Tropicana Orange Juice also has these. Makes a great little base. Make a little box with some chipboard and some foam board. Add that on the back as sort of the counterweight and engine housing that cranes have. I have a construction site right next door to my house right now, so I know all about what cranes look like, let me tell you. A little bit more cardboard cladding on there. And now I'm going to make a little operator's booth or whatever you call it. Driver's seat? I don't know. If you can tell, I've never been a crane operator. Anyways, I cut this little shape here. I'm carefully cutting it out with my X-Acto knife to get nice crisp edges. And then I bend it into a shape that I've seen in construction sites my whole life trace that shape onto another piece of chipboard, cut that out, and I glue them all together to make the side of the crane cockpit. 
Is it a cockpit? It must be a cockpit. Cockpits aren't just on airplanes, right? Let me know down in the comments if you're an expert on uh, heavy machinery, please, because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. And uh, there you go. That's my little cockpit. I'm gonna go with cockpit for now. This piece is from some bizarre dinosaur crane that I had in my bits box for a while. And uh, I saved it for, I wasn't sure what, but uh, it's now. Now is what I've saved it for, apparently. So I pull those wheels off of it because I don't want it to be, uh, I want the treads to actually be on the ground. And then with a piece of foam core, I'm just gonna make a very simple structure here by matching the inside lines of the thing and then gluing it on with some hot glue. Really what I'm going for here is to make a very simple hauler type shape similar to the sand crawler from Star Wars or a lunar rover of some kind, something that looks at home making its way across a barren landscape. And uh, yeah, so I add these panels to the inside to cover up that hollow interior. And then I add some reinforcement pieces to the bottom. I'm really not going overboard with detailing this here, uh, as you can tell, but I'm doing something simple and fun that does the job and adds another cool piece to my table without too much effort. I add a nice uh, slanted piece at the back with this T-shaped piece here. And this is basically taking things more from the realm of a you know, fire engine red toy that used to have a dinosaur's head on it to something that looks in place with the more grounded realistic things that I'm going for. It's hard to tell here, but what I'm doing here, other than, you know, zooming in on the front of that crane, is I magnetize the side of this. So it can stick on the side of the crane, and it can also stick on the hauler, depending on what setup you want to go for. Next, let's make some orc glyphs. You see these everywhere. This is kind of the orcish hieroglyphics, I suppose, and also their, uh, their favorite way of decorating things. Um, so I draw a couple rough skulls and things like that, cut them out, and then I'm gonna take a piece of one centimeter foam core, and I'm gonna glue a bunch of scraps of chipboard to it, very similar to how I detailed the pieces of the fencing before. And what this is gonna be, is this is gonna be a clip-on orky fortification type piece that's gonna go on the top wall of my little compound. As you can see, I'm doing some nice tooth-shaped pieces here to give that nice jagged profile to the building. Awesome. Here's another one that's kind of like a orky face. Orcs have very prominent lower jaws, so I wanted to get something that sort of captured that look a little bit. Here, as you can see, my Mod Podge has sealed up for some reason, but you want to know who's in charge of Eric's Hobby Workshop? I'll give you a clue. It's right there in the title. It's me. It's not the Mod Podge. So I'll just cut that bad boy open and we're back in business. Again, here I'm Mod Podging all these pieces. Mod Podge is a white glue with a sealant in it and this is going to make these things less likely to fray on the edges because they are a paper-based product and it's also going to make them take water washes better later. These ones, as you can see, are a, a modification that clips onto the top. And the difference is I just used a little bit of corrugated paper in these. Next, I'm using a piece of hardware cloth. This stuff I've used in previous videos, and it makes a great ladder. You just bend the tines back, and then I just literally push it right in with my thumbs, and the sharp edges of the wire make an awesome ladder. This other ladder here is actually something I salvaged from an older project, which uh, it used to be a piece of model railroad actually, so those are little railroad ties. I'll put that in the middle of my tower there so there's a way to get to the top. Next I'm going to throw these things all in a box, take them outside, and let's start painting them. The adobe structure I just start with painting a basic khaki color, a tan color, and then I dry brush it with a lighter white just to get pick up some of that detail from the spackling. The metal bits get a heavy dry brush of silver over top of a brown undercoat and this uh, creates a nice rusty metal looking effect once that's dry. And same with the crawler piece, also gets the same thing. This texture on the side of this is really great. You know, 
everything gets this. Yeah, I should have just said that up front. The junkyard pieces, the fences, they all get this brown and silver dry brush. It's a really great base for making this rough metal. And since I made so much stuff, a simple paint job is really great. Next, I used some raw sienna paint to dry brush the ground. As you can see, I got some silver on the ground, and but this is going to go over it and not matter because if I get some of this on the silver bits, it's just going to look like dust and it's going to look great. And any silver on the ground might just look like, you know, metal shavings or bolts or something like that. Next up is a black wash. This is a wash I made with black paint and water and a drop of dish soap. And it's nice and cheap and it does the job nicely. What this does is it ties the colors together, adds a little bit of extra contrast and also gives it a nice matte finish. I come in with a few bright colors on my pieces to add a little bit of orky flair. You know, if you've ever read Orkin Garden Magazine, you will know that uh, red is a very fetching color for your fortifications at this time of year. White is also a nice orky color and of course the universal color of skulls, except for orc skulls, which are of course green. As I mentioned before, orcs' language is glyphs. So this here is the symbol for Beaky, which is how they say Space Marine. And uh, as you can see, it's a red Space Marine, a Blood Angel. It represents the Blood Angels in my collection. So this, in my mind, is either a warning that there's Blood Angels in the area to other orcs, or maybe it's like, uh, we killed some Blood Angels type thing. Now this is a really cool trick. As you can see, I'm using a fine tip micron pen to do some dagging and some checkers on these white panels. This saves so much time and is so much easier to be accurate than using a paintbrush. So this is a really awesome trick if you want to do some quick and easy checkers. I decided this garage-like opening could use a set of doors, which is of course logical, but I didn't want to make them actually able to open because it was too finicky at this stage in the project. So I just glued two panels together that look like doors. And then, in much the same way as before, I added some panels of metallic looking materials and added some two little handles at the bottom just to give it that sort of door vibe a little bit more strongly. And then I made a small door for the other side structure, gluing a piece of mesh and uh, cross braces onto it to give sort of a peephole. It's kind of low to the ground, but it's actually just the right height for a hunched orky figure to peer through and see who goes there. Again sealing these up with Mod Podge. Next I add a little bit of texture here to the top of the structure just as a reminder not to underestimate your opponent if they have the high ground. I cut a little hole for my door and then to recess it in there after adding some spackle to smooth the edges. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two cross braces out of chipboard and glue them onto the back of the door and then use those to sort of suspend it in the door gap to add that nice little door frame nice and easily. Beautiful. And then they get the same paint job as the rest of the rusty metal structures. You might notice I don't use a lot of rust here and in my mind it's because it's an arid desert environment where you just won't get that same drips and, and blooms of orange rust. It's more this sort of burnished color that I think looks right. Time to touch up the structure a little bit after painting in the roof and then I'm going to take a little bit of dust color and I'm gonna go around the bottom of the structure. And what that's gonna do is not only add a nice sort of gradient that makes the sides of the building more interesting, but it's also going to tie it in with the environment once it's on my desert tabletop. Next, I use just a little bit of dark wash to add a few dirty streaks here and there around the top. And that's the last detail I'm gonna do. No need to go overboard. This is a quick, fun, easy project and we're done.
All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please head down in the comments and let me know what you thought. I love reading your guys' comments. A uh, special thank you, uh, as usual, to all my patrons. If you want to become a patron and join the Discord server that we have over there and see some behind-the-scenes photos, go down in the links below, check out my Patreon, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.